All right, it's uh, August 30th, and uh, we'll leave tomorrow for the big day, uh, starting our 12 day, or it's 16 days total. I think we're gonna get about 12 days out of out of it for hunting. Uh, heading to Colorado. Uh, we live here in North Carolina, so it's gonna take us about 30 hours to get there. So uh, I figured uh, while we're packing, I'd go ahead and kind of go through our gear, go through what we're taking. Like I said, it's our first elk hunt, so. Uh, it's a lot of trial and error. It's been a lot of uh, listening to podcasts and the Gritty Bowman and the Born and Raised Outdoors and the Hush guys and all those guys have been watching kind of everything they've got. And uh, Aaron Snyder's uh, pack reviews really kind of had a lot that kind of pushed the way I kind of packed my pack for this. But uh, none of us have ever done a trip like this. So uh, hopefully we didn't overpack and really hope we didn't underpack. So I'm going to start here. Uh, on this end, I'm just going to kind of go this way. So I just got some uh, Mountain Smith, just trek, regular old trekking poles, nothing special. I uh, got my Garmin GPS as a backup using the Onyx map system. Uh, mainly going to use my phone on airplane mode, hopefully. Um, and the GPS will just be a backup just in case run battery dead or phone dies or whatever. Uh, I've got a time... Um, I can't remember exactly what they're called, but uh, I can set certain times on this and do like time-lapse shots and stuff on my camera. Uh, I've got a little bit of a zoom lens. It's a, I believe it's a 70 to 250, if I'm not mistaken, 55 to 250. Um, then I've got a 50 millimeter prime lens. Uh, I've got um, two extra double A's for the um, Garmin. Uh, three extra triple A's for the head, my headlamp and then an extra battery for my rangefinder. Uh, I've got a double battery charger for that I can hook into my battery pack and charge my camera batteries. Um, and then all my charging cables, one for my phone, one for the GoPro, and then one for the battery packs. Uh, I got an Anchor 10,000 milliamp and then I can't remember the brand on this. I got Luco tape wrapped all around it. Um, but it's a 4,000 milliamp. I'll carry this with me during the day as a backup to my other batteries, and then I'll be leaving my 10,000 milliamp at camp, uh, and I'll be running the uh, Anchor 20, uh, 21 watt solar panel uh, back at camp, and hopefully to charge the 10,000 milliamp. And uh, at night, I'll hook up my phone, my um, camera batteries, and all that stuff, and I'll charge it while we're charge that stuff while we're sleeping with the uh, the bigger battery pack. Um, I have sunglasses. Uh, in here I've got some um, lenses, some lens covers for my uh, lenses. Uh, I've got a uh, circular polarizer and a um, uh, 10, I think it's a 10 stop ND filter. Uh, and then I've got five batteries or four batteries in this I've got one extra battery in my binocular case for my camera and then I've got the one battery that's actually in the camera and the camera that I'm taking is what we're videoing with right now it's a Canon T4i um, and then I've got it on a carbon Vanguard um, tripod we'll be taking it uh, I've got my GoPro mount um, I left my GoPro inside but I'm bringing a GoPro Hero 3 black uh, for water, I've got my Sawyer Squeeze with two uh, fold-up water bladders. Um, I've got a Marmot uh, Catalyst two-person. Uh, what I'm actually doing is I'm only running the rain fly with the poles and the uh, ground cloth. I'm not actually going to run the tent, so I'm saving quite a few pounds there. Uh, but I've got the tent, rain fly, the stakes, the, fo the floor. Um, for it, a ground cloth, uh, got a Sea to Summit little packable pillow there. Uh, this is a um, Thermarest Trail Scout trail pad, nothing expensive, uh, but it should get the job done. Uh, and one thing I want to talk about is with this being our first trip, we didn't really, really want to break the bank on all this stuff because being from North Carolina, we really don't use all this stuff for whitetail hunting, but. Uh, so we kind of went middle of the road on a lot of the gear that we got, uh, got a lot of stuff on sale, but we didn't really skimp on anything. So we want to be comfortable, but we also didn't want to break the bank. 
Uh, but anyway, uh, right here is my emergency kit. I got some mole skin, band-aids, uh, tenacious tape, a lighter, emergency blanket, uh, some super glue. You can use super glue for about anything. Uh, some D-loop material, uh, which is also what I run to my drop away rest on my bow just in case something happens and some serving material there. Uh, this is kind of like my camp bag or whatever. It's got deodorant. Uh, I've got my um, ibuprofen, uh, sawed off a little toothbrush, got a little toothbrush in there. Um, floss, my spoon, got some soap, uh, just a little piece of a bar of, of scent-free soap. Uh, got some butt wipes, definitely want to make sure you keep your butt clean out there. Uh, got a few um, wipes for cleaning off if we don't have a, if we don't get the water or whatever, can't actually get in there and really clean off. Got a little camp towel, got some gold bond, and toothpaste, and I believe that's it that I got in here. Not a whole lot, just enough to get me by. Here's kind of what I made in my kill kit. I got some, uh, oh, what, are, what kind of bags did I get? Remember what they're called? Tag bags. No, it ain't tag bags. Anyway, I got some game bags. I uh, got 50 foot of tent cord. I uh, got a compact or a contractor bag, just big old trash bag. I uh, got some flagging tape for if we kill one, mark the trail, and got a set of rubber gloves. Now with the bags, I think we're all we all split our bags up, and we're gonna take uh, two big bags and a little bag per person, and uh, we'll probably be hunting in groups of two. So if you know, we'll only be able to carry a certain amount of meat at a time, but we can go ahead and get all our meat covered up uh, as long as we all got a few bags together. There's no reason for us to pack the, our whole kit. Uh, Black diamond head uh, spot headlamp. It's a really good headlamp. I've had good luck with it. Uh, for a stove, I'm packing a little uh, Primus at a light. A um, little can of fuel in here. Uh, I got a little sponge in here for cleaning it up. Um, that's really it there. And then for plates, uh, I've got some fossil uh, plates here. They fold up into bowls and, and, a, and a cup. They weigh nothing. They come in real handy. Uh, for food, that's what I got here for a day, and that's going to be right around 3,000 calories. And I'll probably do a separate video kind of breaking down what I got in my food. But I took it on a backpacking trip to Washington State uh, about a month ago, and I really liked what I had packed. So that worked out good. It's about 1.8 pounds per day, so not too heavy, not too light. Uh, got a little 10 liter dry sack here, and that's my sleeping bag. Uh, 20 degree down bag. Um, this is all my extra clothes here. I'll have a, a first light. Um, it's their new, uh, it's the Kiln hoodie, I believe is what it is. I've got that. I've got a Cabela Space rain jacket, uh, extra pair of first light boxers, um, extra pair of Fitz socks, and extra liner sock. Uh, and I also got a pair of thermal underwear. Uh, for, and not really for wearing while we're hunting, but more to wear at camp at night or whatever just to get my hunting pants off. Uh, I got a Phelps bugle tube. Um, none of us are all that great at calling. We've gotten a little bit of practice in. We're, you know, decent enough to make some sound, so I don't know how much calling we'll be doing. I uh, got a little external reed uh, Phelps call. Uh, oh, the uh, First Light Uncompadre. I'm taking that as my like my insulation jacket just in case. Being the first two weeks of September, I don't know how cold it's gonna get, but I know a buddy of ours went out there a couple week, a couple years ago and the first week of September it was snowing on him. So never know at higher elevation, it's better to be prepared. Um, I just got a little foam seat pad here for sitting. You know, when we get out there and start glassing or whatever, keep your butt off the rocks, keep your butt from getting wet. I uh, got some Solomon. Quest 4Ds, um, that's what I'm going to wear. I was wearing a lot stiffer boot by Mindel and I just really couldn't get, my feet couldn't get used to it. I hiked in those things a lot, trying to get them broke in and I just couldn't. I uh, got Alaskan Guide, um, Kodiak Cub I believe is what this one is. Uh, and inside of it I got my Vortex Viper HDs, uh, 10x42s. Uh, I got a Loophole uh, RX1000, 
range finder I stick in the front. Got my lens cloth here up front. Uh, face paint in the side just in case I need it. Uh, on this side I've got an extra camera battery for you know where video and camera battery runs dead. Wind checker, a little smoke in a bottle. Uh, on the bottom I've got my Piranha by Havilon. Uh, got a couple extra blades, a lighter, uh, my spare headlamp, uh, chapstick, and two extra SD cards for my camera. And I didn't even talk about it in my bag. I've, I'm bringing eight, eight, eight 32 gigabyte SD cards because we're running two cameras and two GoPros. So we'll have a spare memory card for each GoPro and then eight battery or eight SD cards for four for each camera. Um, and then in the back here, I've got my tags and inside of a little notebook. And then I've also got a little pen back here for writing on stuff and taking notes. And if we kill something, you know, marking our tags. Um, so that little thing there comes in handy. And then also what I did is I tethered my range finder to it. So if I'm ranging and I got to drop it real quick, I can just drop it down and it just hangs there. And then here I've got a little pack. I'm going to put my calls in, uh, my reeds. Uh, and I got my reeds here in a little Primo's turkey call call holder. Uh, got me some crop, lightweight Crocs just for wearing in camp. I'll have them clipped to the back of my bag. Uh, thin neck gaiter, a first light um, beanie, uh, the insul not insulated, but the wool fingerless gloves from first light. Uh, boonie hat. I figured out, I found out that I like hunting in these a little better than a ball cap. Kind of keeps the sun off my neck, and then when I draw back, my bill isn't hitting my string. Uh, what I'm wearing in is some uh, Sitka Timberline pants. They may be just a little too thick for this time of year, but they're super comfortable. I really like these pants. So I'm taking these. Uh, these are going to be in the truck. It'll be an extra um, wool. Uh, merino wool t-shirt and my rain pants just in case it gets real bad and we need to come back to the truck and get some rain gear uh, belt uh, my suspenders for my pants I hadn't figured out if I'm gonna pack these or wear these but these are the first light tall gaiters uh, and then I'll have a I have a first light thin uh, merino wool t-shirt I'll be wearing that in uh, and that's it for what's going in my pack uh, as far as my pack goes this looks like a lot of gear, but this is a 2200 cubic inch pack. And our plan is to pack in three days at a time. Uh, the only thing that'll change is food. If we want to go in longer, we'll just pack a couple more days of food. If we want to go in shorter, we'll just pack one day at a time. Uh, so plan is to go back, find a, find the elk and camp with where the elk are. So this, this is what we'll be carrying. I hadn't weighed it, but I'm guessing probably in the 50 pound range, if I had to say 50 to 55, but most of that weight I could get away with or do away with if I didn't want a video. But the fact that I'm videoing, that's probably 15 pounds worth of gear there for video and equipment. But this is the Everly stock uh, frame and then the transformer pack. This is what I use for deer hunting. Uh, I've got another dry, a dry bag that'll zip to that and it'll add another 3,000 cubic inches to it if I have to, but I don't think I'm going to end up having to do that. Uh, for my bow, I've got a uh, Hoyt Carbon Spider 34. Um, got an 11 inch front bar and a 7 inch side bar uh, from CBE. Uh, I never ran a side bar up until I got this. I went to a tight spot quiver and I went to the tight spot 7 arrow. And when I put that on there, it unbalanced my bow enough to where that side bar is almost I almost have to have it if not it's it can't my bow pretty good uh, I got a CB tech hybrid it's a three pin adjustable uh, so be able to reach on out there a little bit if we need to just got a regular old primo sling I stuck it on here just to keep my cams and stuff protected while I got it strapped to the back of my pack keep from beating and banging beating things up uh, running Easton Axis 300s um, with QAD Exodus uh, three blade broadheads. Uh, I think my arrow total weight's like 482 grains. It's a lot heavier than what I usually run. I usually shoot like 415 grains. Uh, but the penetration's definitely there. So 
it's been good so far. I think it's going to be a good setup. Like I said, never shot anything as big as an elk, so we'll see how it goes. But um, I think with those arrows, I'm shooting probably around 260 feet a second. So not super fast, but uh, I got a short draw length. And um, as long as you're shooting accurate, I don't think that super fast speed really makes a big difference. But this is what we're running, so hopefully that helps. Uh, I know these pack reviews are really what kind of, you know, made me kind of pick the way I put some of this stuff together. So hopefully it helps. Uh, and we'll see how this trip goes. It's going to be a trip of a lifetime. Definitely can't wait. We'll start making the trip out about this time tomorrow evening. And uh, so we'll catch back up with you when we make it to Colorado. Stick with us. Buffalo Creek Outdoors. It should be a cool trip.